Welcome to the Childcare Genius Podcast, proud to be the world's number one community for brilliant childcare leaders. Each episode will feature interviews with the brightest minds in the childcare industry to guide you into becoming a smarter business leader. Our hosts have opened 10 schools while raising five children. They are certified business coaches and are the top selling childcare business book authors of all time. This episode is sponsored by Elif Childcare Insurance. Give Blake a call at 972-232-2258 to get a free quote on childcare business insurance today. Let's welcome to the Childcare Genius Podcast, our hosts, Brian and Carol Dupre. Welcome to episode 81 of the Childcare Genius Podcast. We are your hosts, Brian and Carol Dupre, and we are excited to have a great episode today. And we wanted to let you know that we're sorry to tell you, but our um, Child Care Genius Live Conference in Las Vegas, April 14th and 16th is sold out. So we're sorry to tell you that. We're excited that we did sell out. Uh, there's gonna be over 225 people at this conference. We do have a wait list for anybody because kids, we have cancellation. So if you go to childcaregenius.com, um, and go under the conference tab, you can join our wait list. So if we do have some tickets available, uh, we might be able to get, if anybody cancels, we, we might be able to get you a ticket. Um, but wanted to let you know that it's Black History Month. And what better way to celebrate than interview very successful African-American child care owners. So each week this month, we're going to interview a different couple that we've had the pleasure of personally coaching. And this week, we'll interview Michelle and Frederick Wright from Illinois. And this is our first year coaching with them. Uh, they are doing an amazing job. We met them at our leverage conference in Jamaica for the first time last year and just fell in love with this couple. They're super sweet. They've got a good business. Their business is growing now. They've been coaching with us and, and doing super well. And um, so get ready for a power packed episode from this dynamic power couple. Let's get Michelle and Frederick on the line. Hi, Frederick and Michelle. Welcome to the Child Care Genius Podcast. How are you guys today? Hi. We're doing well. How are you guys doing? Good to be here. Good. Real good. We just got back from Mexico. We spent 10 days down there playing in the sun. You can see a little bit of tan and a little bit of, I got my sunglasses, <laughs> my eyeglass burn, Mark. Um, we're laying on a beach, but we're back. Mm -hmm. I'm looking out my window and seeing white snow instead of white sand. So, but it's good to be home. Yeah. How about you guys? There's snow where you're at? There's a little bit of snow, but, you know, we're in the Midwest, so what do you expect? Yeah, we get where, all four uh, where, where, where are you located at? We want to relocate, probably <laughs> Florida. But we're we're close to St. Louis now. We're uh, right across the bridge from St. Louis, so maybe 30 minutes from St. Louis. Yep. So we're in Illinois, Caseyville, Illinois. Illinois. So that's cold country, too. So you yes. know my pain. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we're excited to have you on the Child Care Genius Podcast. We want to, uh, we've gotten to know you for the last few months, and we've fallen in love with this couple here that I'm telling you. They're sweet. They're amazing. They've got a big heart, and they have a passion for people. And we said, we got to have you as on the podcast. So we're excited to have you, and we're going to ask you some questions. So sit back and relax, and let's go and dive in. So can right. you tell us more about your background, maybe how you guys met, how you swooped her off your, her feet there, Frederick, and <laughs> what your life was like before you started in the child care business. Paint a picture for us. Yeah. Well, Brian and Carol, we want to say thank you all for the opportunity. We really appreciate this. And we are so grateful to be a part of the Child Care Genius Network. And so my background is management. I was a bakery market manager for uh, Panera Bread, St. Louis Bread Company for about eight years, and uh, I was the first African American uh, bakery market manager, and uh, that was my background: management, you know, manage things. So, and mine's where I was working for the state. I was a lactation consultant, love it, taking care of the mommies and babies, and so I loved it. And that's what I was doing until I heard the call from God to say, "Hey, stop and do childcare." So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And how we met before <laughs> I got to Panera Bread. We worked at Marriott and I was, uh, we both worked at so bring food and all that stuff, but. And he chased me down. She was chasing me <laughs> on the elevator. And 
the yeah, elevator yeah, caught yeah. both of us, and that's when we met. And <laughs> it was it yeah. was love at first sight. Yeah. Thirty one years later, we thirty two years. Yep. Yeah, in April. Yep. So yeah, it's been good. Wow. Panera Bread. I love Panera Bread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Me yeah. too. Yeah, it's great. So that was like before the child care business. And mm -hmm. how how many schools do you have and how long you've been doing it now? Yeah, we have a total of three schools. Um, two that's up and running and one school that we use as a non-licensed site. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of license exam. We use when school is out or you know holidays, things like that. So it's actually a license exempt site. Yes, and uh, we've been in business almost thirty years now. We started as a licensed home for seven years. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Um, that's where we started. We converted our our boys' bedroom and in the living room space into a little child care. We started there and yeah. had a waiting list and bought a bigger house and and then it was like, hey, I need a center. So uh, we grew. We were forced to grow to a center. Yeah, I was a minister and a young minister in church, preaching and teaching. And and she came home one day and uh, said she's going to quit her job. I was like, and open a daycare in the house. I was like, no, you're not. We need both those incomes <laughs> in this house. But, and, you know, I had a vision and, you know, heard from God. We're believers and uh, heard from God. And he said, everything that we do will start with daycare and literally everything that we do was surrounded around by daycare. Yes. Yeah. The ministry, everything is coming. The, you would think the church is affected. We have a lot of people, children from the ministry, church, families, and some of the teachers, different ones that kind of connect, yep. interconnect like a community. Yeah. Um, can you tell our audience about uh, what's different about your child care center? Mm -hmm. well, we have a, we're licensed for 24 hours. Um, and we don't just take care of children. We actually got our, our community. And so we're, we're different in a way that how we not only care for kids, but the, the longevity, the, the legacy. We have parents that we've cared for as children that are now grown and they're having children and bringing their children to us. And so we call it legacy mm -hmm. and, uh, so we really enjoy what we do. And we were uh, in our area with one of, well, they're the largest in one of the cities, uh, one of our locations, we're the largest uh, child care center in the area. Uh, and, you know, we offer um, Spanish, a little bit of Spanish, not a whole lot, basic for children up to preschool. And then we also offer American Sign Language, which is awesome. You know, a lot of those nonverbal children are showing up even now, even in pre-K. So we work with them from babies. And that's just a natural part of our uh, curriculum and our day-to-day. -day. So That's so awesome. I think that's so when you first started out, what were some obstacles that you faced when you were trying to mm -hmm. open those schools? Because there's somebody out there right now that wants to open one and maybe is a little scared. What are yeah. some obstacles you face? Yeah. I think the biggest thing that was a challenge for us or obstacle for us was the finances. We didn't know or we didn't know how to operate or have enough finances to do what we, you know, the vision that we had. And uh, so that was a major, you know, and then it, we have to have faith. We have to step out on faith. I mean, we have to really believe in what we have, we have been doing and caring for children and take that step of faith. And the, I think the uh, and the other big challenge is getting your spouse on board. That was ours. You know, we joked about, uh, I had the vision. It's like, quit your job. I love my job. Some people quit their job because they hate it. I love what I did. I get to visit the mummies and babies and all the, the new babies. It was wonderful. It was fulfilling. I was getting awards and stuff. So, But I quit because I knew I felt that call from God. And it sounds crazy. I said, you know, God, you got to show that man. It's not, that's what I said in prayer. I said, you have to show that man. Because I got the vision, but we had to be in agreement. And that's our marriage has been built on us being on agreement with everything down to when we had our babies and stuff, you know. And so uh, he had to see. I said, God, show him. And I came to him. He was like, you going to do it? <laughs> and I was I didn't tell you I was pregnant with our third child. Yeah, I was like eight months pregnant. And anyway, home with the baby and going back after maternity leave, but decided not to go back. And so he had to you know. I had the vision, but he had to know. So that was a challenge. But when he got a vision as well, and we've been in agreement on that, it's been full force ahead. That was the biggest challenge. Wow, that's awesome. 
it's February, and February is Black History Month. Can you tell us what that means to you? Mm. Well, in, in, in our culture, culture uh, this means a lot. It means so much to us um, because we're we're African American, we're, we're entrepreneurs, and we, we 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 didn't see a lot of people that look like us that own business when we were growing up. And so, for me and my wife to be entrepreneurs now, um, for our children and even the children that we care for. It's setting a precedence in them that you can be what you want to be, and you just got to dream and believe in your abilities and yourself. And so, you know, they get to see people that look like them, you know, not so much as being the boss because there's a cost, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but being that entrepreneur, you know, stepping out and owning something, owning owning your own business. So that it really means a lot to us. And this is a chance to showcase, uh, you know, what the contributions that African Americans have made to uh to our country to a society you know uh it's not shown as much you can see a lot of negative things so i look at it as a time we can show some positive yes. role models some good things some uh positive impact that the african-american community has that we've made in contribution to the world yeah you know our country is not perfect but it's a perfect place to own a business i wouldn't want mm -hmm. to own, own a business in any other country in the world this is yeah. the place to own a business and somebody yeah. can go from zero to a millionaire. You can start with less than nothing. Like we started with less than nothing. We were really mm -hmm. poor. And <laughs> become multimillionaires. What mm -hmm. other country can you do that in? So, yeah. you know, we may yeah. have our faults, but I wouldn't want to do business anywhere else. And you stand mm -hmm. on the shoulders of giants, but you guys are giants yourself. And you're a mm -hmm. role model for other people to look at. And thank you so yeah. much for doing that. Your, your kids, um, they'll be very proud of you. You've blazed an amazing trail for other people to follow. So you're making history you're on the fly. A, you're bringing a role model not only for your children, but also for all the children to take care of. Yep. Yeah. I admire you guys. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. So what are your, what are some of the strategies you use when working together? You know, Carol and I work together each and every day for the last 25 years. And that can be a challenge. Some people are like, oh my God, I could never work with my spouse. I can be like, I don't, I don't know how I'd ever work without her. It would drive me crazy, but maybe... He would probably want that some days, but anyway, what are some strategies you use for working together so you don't get on each other's nerves? Oh my goodness, Brian, we, we've always been um, at the point where we would structure, we call it, like you say, stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. And we work pretty good together. We know each other's strength and we know each other's weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And so like finances, you know, one would handle the finances and one would handle the the everyday, you know, mundane things. And so we, we call, you call it stay in your lane. And you had said that at the conference, I believe. And we looked at each other like, that's exactly what we do. <laughs> and here's what I've learned, you know, stay in your lane until the other person invites you in, into that lane. You know, handle what you're supposed to handle. You know, you're responsible for. And then if that person needs help, hey, I need your help with this. Mm -hmm. And as a partner, that's what we do. We remember we are partners in this thing. And so until that other person needs your help, stay in your lane. And you really helped us at the uh, conference when you talked about that. We had that mindset. We set up a structure uh, when he left his uh, corporate job to work with me full time. No way we could have went to a center without his help. He was the van driver, the baker, the butcher, the baker, everything. <laughs> and, you know, so we had the tag team and we set up a structure where I was the director, the day-to-day -day running my field, early childhood, you know, yeah. uh, I teach at the university now, early childhood uh, classes and his background, the management and the human resource. So we came in a tag team and we set up, I'm the director, he's the facility manager. Mm -hmm. We don't have that title in our area, but that's how we set it up. Even when we hire people now, we have somebody as director, facility manager and we had those roles clearly defined yeah. but in Jamaica when you talked about it yeah, really and is. the things you shared in that session yeah. oh my god it it really redefined it. Yeah. we had a little beginning of it keeping in our lane but when you said that and even in being invited into the other lane mm -hmm. that's a new concept you taught us and that helps us you have those heart-to-heart -heart talks you taught us to do we've been doing that so it's been so helpful Love that. Awesome. Hey, Frederick, pretty good, yeah. pretty cool work with your best friend each and every day, isn't it? It is. I, I love it. And I get to see her at work and then I get to see her at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome.
how has coaching helped you grow your business? Wow. Wow. <laughs> the, <sighs> the systems. We have been in business for over 20 years and we've had, you know, things in place. But when you all were talking about systems, that really lit us up because we know systems, but it was the structure of our systems that helped us, um, helped us preparing for our future and how we can run our business, our schools remotely and live a, a more healthier life, stress-free, uh, and to keep those systems in place. And I think that that really helped us. And I know the coaching, you know, helped us uh, the better focus on what we wanted to do. You know, uh, you know, we talked about coaching. Every every field has a coach mm -hmm. in sports. You know, acting they have acting coaches. Yeah. And then early childhood is like a new concept to have that. <laughs> but it has set us above and beyond. We wouldn't be where we are even today, sustaining yeah. without the coaching we've experienced just in these few months. Yeah. Um, so we know coaching it takes us beyond just us, and it helps us to go to the next level. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that next level is a, is a lot better than this level, and I, I love that. So where do you see yourself three years from now? And with coaching, have you been able to see farther down the road than you would have done on your own? Yes, yes. Definitely. Yeah. I, I see. I'm already looking at the next center. And the one of the goals was, you know, centers. Uh, from the beginning. From the beginning, we knew we would have multiple centers. And so our goal is to, I think, to add more centers um, going forward in the future. You know, we have this night care. There's something in our area that is needed with night care, uh, respite care, overnight care. So I think those are some of the goals in the future that I think that we're going to be really honing into. Yeah, that sounds well, great. That's good to know your area because every area is different in what they need. So finding yes. out what's needed in your area is very good. Yes. And you attended our leverage conference in Jamaica. What was your experience like there? Take us back, take us We're back. ready to go back. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you said the system. It, it was. Mm -hmm. the, Jamaica was refreshing, relaxing, and rejuvenating. Yeah. I'll tell you, it, it, it was a time of reality check for us. Because, like we said, we've been in business over 20 some years running childcare centers. But the the level of that conference was, Brian, I want to be honest with you and Carol. I was, wasn't all, I wasn't too ready to go. Michelle had to convince me. She's like, you know, we, we're going, right? I was like, okay, we're going. I really <laughs> wasn't in it. But when I got there, we had never been to Jamaica, number one, love the place. But your conference and how you guys ran the conference was A+. Plus. I mean, it really helped us. It built us up. It encouraged us. It empowered us to go back home, put stuff in order that we can build our, our future through our centers. And that conference was amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, the, you know, I've been, I've attended conferences. I'm more of a conference person than him. I've attended a few for different things, ministry, other um, concepts, uh, everything other than early childhood. But I've attended some early childhood conferences. But this is the most practical yes. uh, that I've ever attended, the most useful yes. uh, and the most accommodating. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been where they did information overload and yeah. just throw stuff out and then it's not useful. Yeah. But the way you guys presented it, uh, the even it was it was the information overload. Mm -hmm. It was more than you could. <laughs> it was a lot of good stuff, but we could actually take All it the and good. digest All the good, it, yeah. the good and, and actually use it, come and apply it. So it was life changing. Yeah. And the poolside coaching. Oh. Okay. The, and <laughs> I, no, tonight. this was, I'm telling you, to start the time that you started and finish yeah, the and time. then left us with the rest of the day to, to enjoy, enjoy relaxing, you know, community with the other other mm -hmm. owners there. Oh, make some connections. It was amazing. Yes. So we can't wait for this year. Yes. This year. To, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you're listening to this podcast, September 30th to October 4th, 2024, we'll be back in Jamaica at our Beer Star Resort. So uh, childcare.genius.com, we're, we're going to be selling tickets in March. And wow. we, we hope to go. It will sell out very quickly. We limit yeah. the yeah. size of this to keep it small and intimate. So thank you for the kind words. We we, we agree. Um, we, we, we're we excited. Um, we love Jamaica. It's, it's yeah. So if you had to do it all over again, 
<laughs> Start from the beginning. Yeah. You'd be a lot younger at that point. What would you do differently? Well, I think the coaching. If we could have got a coach earlier, earlier, <laughs> sooner, sooner, <laughs> we would be in a better position. Yes. And I think Michelle said it, the coaching, you know, I'm a I'm an avid golf coach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I coach other pastors. And and yeah, yeah, pastors in ministry, I coach. Mm -hmm. But no one was there, or we didn't have anybody when we started this thing. Because it's been 20 some years, I think we would be so much further th than we were now if we'd have had a coach. Yeah. And that's the right coach. Uh, and I want to say that yes. you guys have been amazing. You're so approachable. Like even in the conference, you know, I've been to conference and the, like the big person behind the screen, it's like the Wizard of Oz. You know, they're behind the curtain. You can't approach them. <laughs> you guys are so approachable, yeah. uh, comfortable, answer questions, accommodating, yeah. you know, and uh, even now, you know, the coaching, you have to be comfortable, you know, with, with your coach. Not just that, oh, they're so nice, but the, the coach is able to like Get in your face yeah. if you need in a good way, you yeah. know, so um, to kind of push you out of yourself. So I, we would have definitely did it sooner, yeah. finding the right coaches. And you guys have been amazing. Yeah. I just want to say that. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. That's probably what we would do. Um, and I'd probably buy more real estate sooner. Carol took the call <laughs> for her to convince me into that. So I agree with you, Frederick. That's, you know, that I would have joined a coaching program 10 years sooner and bought real estate 10 years sooner. But we know what we can't go back. And 10 years from now, you'll be glad you are where you are because of the decisions you made. And, you know, there's somebody out there listening right now who is on the fence about that. And um, you're like, you know what? Maybe you convinced me that I need to get help. And mm -hmm. we, you know, we didn't, what I would hear somebody say, you don't know thing, you don't know everything about everything. Mm -hmm. And what you don't know could be beneficial if somebody else can teach it to you. And also True. learning from other people's mistakes is a lot better than learning from your own. Mm -hmm. I agree. And that's yeah, where a coaching true. group pays mm -hmm. out because you can learn from other people's mistakes instead of making your own hundred thousand or million dollar yeah. mistake like we've we've all made. Yeah. But anyway, we've enjoyed having you guys on the podcast. We enjoy getting to know you. Can't wait to hang out in Las Vegas and Jamaica with you again. And uh we thank you so much for, for taking the time out of your busy lives to spend yeah. a little time with our audience at South Dean. Thank you for everything. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything <laughs> that was a great interview they are a dynamic couple and they work so <laughs> well just, together i love them i mean i just yeah. fred frederick and i just i mean we hit it off the day we met he's just a good guy good heart he's got a pastor hat on so i just you know i love that i love helping people and ministering um so i just fell in love with this couple and i'm so glad they're doing so well and if you want to follow in frederick and michelle's footstep and you need help in your coaching business and would like a free coaching call with somebody on our staff that can help you out. One of our coaches would be happy to help you out. Go to our website at childcaregenius.com and under the coaching tab, select I'd like a free coaching call button. You're guaranteed to come away with two or three action items to help you grow your business. So this concludes episode 81 of the Child Care Genius Podcast. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy life to spend a little bit of time with Carol and me. And just a reminder to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss a future episode of the Child Care Genius Podcast. See you next week. See you next week. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Child Care Genius Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please do us a favor and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a future episode. Don't forget to visit our website at childcaregenius.com to see a list of services we offer to help grow your child care business. Until next time, thank you for being a part of the Child Care Genius community.